Uh, in this assignment, we're going to use some of the elements of art that we talked about at the uh, on the first day, and we're going to use those to create some. Uh, to, we're going to use some some principles of design, and we're going to use the elements to develop those principles of design. So these are the three elements that we're going to use. We're going to use line, we're going to use shape, and we're going to use value. And we're going to use those three things to create pattern and to create contrast. <clears throat> so I'm going to show you uh, a Zentangle done by a student, I think last year. And here's, so this is what your final product is should resemble. Obviously, everybody's is always different. I've been assigning this project uh, for the last, I don't know, four or five years, and not once have I ever seen one that looks the same as another one. And it's I, that blows my mind, just the fact that you can have so many different possibilities to this assignment. But what I do want to talk about is I want to talk about the principles of design that we see uh, going on here, namely contrast and pattern. So um, let's, let's define those first. So pattern is simply the repetition of line and shape. So if I have, if I have a shape, let's say a circle, right? By itself, that's just a circle. But if I take that circle and repeat it over and over again, well, now I've created a line of circles, but I can also branch out in other directions and create a pattern of circles. I can do that with lines as well. Um, a cool pattern that I like to do, um, a lot of uh, the more intricate Zentangle patterns start from a grid. So actually, I will lightly, I'm going to very, very lightly draw a grid on this sheet of paper. And it's not a precise grid, it's actually pretty sloppy. So let's see if we can see that. Nope, we can't. Um, <clears throat> but regardless of whether or not we can see my very, very light grid, you'll be able to see the result of that. So I'm going to use lines. I'm going to make like, I don't know if you guys remember this. I remember it because I'm a lot older than you, but we used to have these kickballs in elementary school and they had this like three lines going one way, three lines going other way, and then, like, when you got blasted in the face during uh, kickball or, or dodgeball, like, you had that pattern, like, imprinted on your head. Uh, maybe if I draw it, you guys will recognize it. I was a fat kid, so... I had this, I wasn't able to get out of the way a lot, so I wore this pattern most of my tenure in elementary school. But it looks something like that, right? So that's using lines to create patterns. Um, and like I said, I, whether or not you can see it, I've lightly put a grid in there just to make sure that every like if I try doing this without a grid it's going to grow these weird branches and it's not going to fit and it's not going to do what it's supposed to do um another one that I see a lot of people use is just a simple checkerboard um so obviously I've did, I did this video yesterday which for me is right now which is weird to say um but hopefully I'll be able to make it into school. Hopefully I made it into school by the time you're watching this. Um, and there'll be packets of Zentangle patterns on the table right up here. 
So hopefully, hopefully that has happened, and hopefully those exist for you today. If they're not there, then I, I didn't get in to get it done. Um, so anyway, I forgot where I was. So pattern is repetition of line and shape. So I've just showed you shape and line patterns. Now, contrast is basically like the difference between colors or values. So if you have black and white, those are high contrast, right? Because they're on two separate ends of the value scale. So throughout this Zentangle assignment, what you want to try to look for is you want areas of complete black and you want areas of complete white but you also want to hit some of those middle grays and you don't want the same middle gray all the way across depending on what kind of pattern you use if it's if it's real small tight uh, circles or lines or whatever it is you're going to create a very dark value but if you have a lot of space a lot of white paper underneath that pattern is going to be a lighter gray so I'm gonna show you on this on the student work what I'm talking about so hopefully the projector doesn't isn't I don't have the new one I'm not bitter I'm not bitter I got my big board so okay whatever it is what it is uh, the new projector would be nice so just saying um so hopefully you guys can see this with the antiquated light blast on the whatever anyways um so <clears throat> using patterns to create gray value sounds confusing, but when I talk to you about um, the two different Sharpies, that's, this is used for big areas, uh, thick lines, stuff like that. And then the, the fine point or the, the ultra fine or the extra fine or whatever it is you're using, this is going to be the one where you're going to be able to dig in and kind of put some of these smaller little patterns so that you get variations of gray. So I'll show you. So we've got almost like what I did. We've got these, these circles here. And then here you we've got these like a bunch of little rainbows and then in this one we've got big circles surrounded by little tiny circles and then in, in this one we've got more little tiny circles but you can see that the lines it might it, this person might have used a, a a regular fine point sharpie for these circles but certainly they did not use it for this or for this they use the ultra fine but so up close way up close we can see all these individual lines but when we go back as this pulls back in the like right about here i'm looking at my screen i can see that this has turned into like a middle gray this i can still see a little it looks kind of textured but the further i go back the more those lines all blend together and that becomes a darker gray. Same thing with this. Like there's there's lines in here, but you're so far back right now that you can't see. But as I get closer, you can see how those lines show up. So as you work on your Zentangle, uh, there's two approaches that you can take. You can start in a corner with no plan and just kind of work your way out and let it go wherever it takes you or you can break your space up into chunks and then in each of those chunks do some kind of different pattern it looks like that's what this person did like it looks like they started with all these squiggles and lines and big shapes drawn on their paper and then they just went back through and zentangled those individual parts so here's another one and this one actually was hanging up in uh i was hanging somewhere that's why it's matted so hopefully the glare is not too bad but you could see 
like you can see all those different patterns you can see all those individual lines but then as this goes back like you still see obviously some of these bigger shapes right but like stuff like this in here all starts to blend together and you get the contrast between your gray values so if you if you find that you're finished with this project in the next two weeks you've done it too fast the reason we start this now is because this takes a long time if you do it well and if you follow all of my directions so what i'm looking for when i grade this assignment is it's a pen and ink composition that means i don't want to see any pencil any like setup grids that you draw like i drew on my thing that i've lost already the yeah i don't know where it is it's gone um if you set up or even if you use a pencil to break up the space of your paper i don't want to see any of that so the mistake that a lot of people make is they'll do a checkerboard pattern and they'll actually color it in with pencil first once you go over that with sharpie you can still see the pencil underneath and that makes it look less clean it makes it look a little bit messy and we don't we don't want to see that we want this to look clean and crisp um and that's the second thing on the list of requirements is that it's clean clean lines no and, and don't use scribbles either the people who are done in in the next three weeks when i see your zentangle i know i'm gonna see like and you you just let it go um be deliberate be intentional and don't be sloppy and if you're sloppy on accident if something happens this is easy because it's non objective you're not drawing anything you can just cover up go over it color okay so you went over the lines a little bit okay then just make that line a little bit thicker uh, i'll show you what i mean so if i've got a now let's say i've got like a a shape never mind that other stuff that was that's for 3d design so i've got a shape like that right so let's say i want to do We'll do just arches. Now, I rushed. So you can see that I've gone outside the lines a little bit. How do we fix that? We just thicken the line in. Well, there's another sloppy spot inside the shape. So just sticking the line in. And then you'll hide all those all those little accidents that you make. As long as we can't see the pencil underneath, that's that's big. So <clears throat> again, um, pen and ink, clean lines and make sure that you have a variety not just a variety of patterns you should be able to use at least five different patterns okay uh, most people have 12 13 14 different patterns um you should have a variety of patterns but also a variety of values so that when i look at it from far away i see areas of black i see areas of white but then I also see like light grays, I see middle grays, and I see dark grays. So again, just to recap, use line, use shape, and use value to create pattern, which is a repetition of line and shape. 
and to create contrast, which is the difference between values. It's a pen and ink composition. You should have clean lines. Oh yeah, and you should have a variety of values and a variety of patterns. So good luck, have fun, and again, take your time on this because we have literally the rest of the semester to finish this. This is not the only thing we're going to do, but this is the thing that you have the longest time to work on. So I'll see you guys on Monday.